I'd like to call to order this regular council meeting of the Town of Saugeen Shores and extend, again extend a welcome to everyone in the chambers this evening. First order of business is a declaration of pecuniary interest and I'll remind you of your responsibility to do so. Uh, the next item is additions, deletions or amendments and we have nothing under that. We move down to number four which is adoption of minutes and the first one and I have a motion that's been moved by Councillor Dave Mayette, seconded by Councillor Grace. The council adopts the minutes of the regular council meeting and the special council meeting of June 27, 2016 as presented. Are there any errors or omissions or comments? All in favor? Opposed to me? That's carried. The next item is Committee of the Whole Minutes, June 22nd and June 27th. It's been moved by Councillor Minaj, seconded by Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. The Council note and file the minutes of the special Committee of the Whole Meeting dated June 22nd, 2016, and the regular Committee of the Whole Meeting of June 27th, 2016 as presented. Any errors, comments? Not all in favor. It's carried. Next item then is a general government report of uh, report of the committee holds a general government report from June the 27th. It's been moved by Vice Deputy Mayor Huber, seconded by Councillor Minaj. The Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores adopts the general government report dated June the 27th, 2016, recommending the following: one. The Council accepts the 2015 audit, Annual Audited Financial Statements as presented by Mike Bolton of BDO. Two, that the municipality, municipalities identified in the Director of Finance Staff Report dated June 27, 2016 be approved for benchmarking purposes in conjunction with the Pay Equity Market Review Project being conducted by Ward Up to Grove Consulting and Human Resources. Three, that Council approves in principle the implementation of option number three, to allow Council to assume the roles and responsibility of the Planning Advisory Committee and to increase the membership of the Committee of Adjustment to seven members consisting of four members of the public and three members of Council and the staff be directed to provide an imp implementation plan for this recommendation. Questions or comments? Councillor Minaj. With respect to the BDO report, Mr. Mayor, number one. Mm -hmm. It, is there a, a full, I don't remember seeing, and I'm, I'm asking, I guess, a formal response from our chief financial officer that says, based on the information contained in that report, thou shalt consider doing the following, or thou should be doing the following to, to uh, that there were, there were a number of areas that the BDO reports suggested where we might have been lagging, where we, where we could do some different things. Will we get a complimentary chief financial officer report that says, now that you've seen it, this is what I recommend you should be doing about it? Well, well really, the audit is just a snapshot in, in any particular time of the year, and he's telling you where we are. Those decisions about whether we're going to spend more money on capital investments or, or those types of things rest with the nine of us around this table. And so when we go through budgets at each year, staff will bring here recommendations on what they believe are the best course of action, and we'll resolve that. Thank you. So rebuttal to that then is I'm asking that the Chief Financial Officer or Director of Finance provide us with an, with an itemized response to the BDO audit. I think we need some, a lot more, clear, some more clarity in that because I mean, itemize to what particular item might uh, Neil? Because okay, so if I gave a report to Larry that said these are itemized items that were presented by Mike Bolton, Michael Bolton of BDO, and I'm looking for feedback from our director of finance on these items, shared to be sure. shared with all of council. Sure. Thank you. Okay, I'm assured by the CAO that we can provide that. Any other comments? All in favor of the recommendation? Opposed, if any. That's carried. So the next item on the agenda is the Community Services Parks and Recreation Report. Originally there was two items on it, and it had been split with two uh, motions. Uh, the first one was, uh, and, and the first item that was split out of it had to do with the town of Saugeen Shores recreation report dated one about the uh, Soggy Shores Rib Fest to be provided a license. Um, the council authorized a special event permit to Soggy Shores Rib Fest to provide a license 
rib tasting event in Saugeen Shores Community Complex, February, or sorry, Friday, August 26th, Saturday, August 27th, Sunday, August 28th, and further authorize an exemption to the noise bylaw, <coughs> excuse me, to allow amphloid music from 7 to 11 p.m. August 26th, Saturday, August 27th. And there is no mover or seconder, so we will move to the next item. So the next item then is it's been moved by Councillor Madison and seconded by Councillor Mike Myatt. The Council of Town of Saugeen Shores adopts the Community Services Parks and Recreation Report 2, dated this June 27, 2016, recommending the following. The Council enter is, enters into a construction management agreement to undertake the renovations to accommodate an additional doctor with the Dr. Earl Medical Health Center at a cost of 305000 plus HST and that the additional required funding to complete the project be funded from the Dr. Earl Medical Health Center Reserve. Questions or comments? All in favor? Opposed? If any, that's carried. So the next item then is the motion on beach maintenance. This will take a little while. <laughs> I'm going to read it just for the for the benefit of everyone here, Mike. It's been moved by, by Councillor Mike Myatt, seconded by Councillor Minaj. Whereas business in Saugeen Shores rely heavily on sur summer tourism trade, and whereas visitors to our beach in Southampton, Port Elgin, Goebbels Grove, and Knights Grove in the town of Saugeen Shores provide economic spin-offs to our local economy, and whereas residents of Saugeen Shores and tourists, when visiting our beaches, expect a level of maintenance that encourages return visits rather than being a detriment towards repeat visits, and whereas residents of Saugeen Shores and tourists have witnessed a declining level of maintenance and deterioration of our beaches, primarily at Port Elgin, Goebbels Grove, and Eitz Grove, and whereas our Port Elgin Beaches Association has long supported the Beach Groomer Trial, and whereas the Ministry of Natural Resources has played an influential role with determining the level of service Salgin Shore staff are able to carry out with machinery along our waterfront due to the arrival of piping plovers at the Port Elgin Beach, and whereas there has been a call from members of the public and tourists for a common and reasonable ground regarding beach maintenance, while still respecting the protection of piping plovers. And whereas our beach maintenance guidelines call for grooming of our beaches four times per year prior to long weekends in May, late June, late July, and late August, save and accept Ites Grove that currently calls for twice per year grooming. And whereas this maintenance routine has been non-consistent, now therefore be it resolved that the Council supports the ongoing request of the Port Elgin Saugeen Beaches Association to carry out a beach grooming trial using similar grooming equipment used on a regular basis at the Southampton Beach and further that this trial take place in the summer of 2016 and further that the council request a joint meeting with the Ministry of Natural Resources representative, Port Elgin Saugeen Beaches Association representatives, Community Services representatives, the CAO, and two council representatives to discuss maintenance practices permitted along our waterfront in keeping with the protection of piping plovers and con in consideration of the economic benefits of maintaining our beaches to a level that encourages and entices visitors to our community. Comments, questions? Councillor Mike Myers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I'd like to start off by saying, uh, and I, I wanted to send uh, accolades out to our, uh, our public work staff, uh, community service department staff, um, and and uh, those individuals that, that made our, our beach cleanup such a success uh, this past couple of weeks. And I know, uh, understanding from staff, that, 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 that some or much of that work was, was planned anyways the following week, but it surely uh, it did speed things up with with the occurrences, what happened through social media and so on and so forth. But I wanted to pass, pass out um, <clears throat> my sincere thanks to uh, staff for doing a wonderful job. And I understand one of our employees actually provided a, cultivator another one provided a piece of a tractor and I think it was just to roll out all the stops to get the work done and I so I, I have nothing but praise for the work, good work they did um, you've heard from uh, David Schemmel's uh, president of the Saugeen Port Elgin Saugeen Beach Association this evening talk about beach groomer trial and they've been talking about that for, for a couple of years now and I certainly endorse that idea it's the same uh, beach groomer as my motion indicates the surf rake that's used at Southampton Beach uh, two or three times per summer I have a 
email from Public Works today that it's actually a couple times, $200 per hour, um, that they we bring in that company, uh, you know, we lease, uh, well, they come in with an operator and, and, and groom our beach. And um, so I'm understanding with the new surf rake that this company has purchased, that it, quite, uh, it would be quite effective on Port Algon Beach and Goebbels Grove nights. Um, we will only know that, and we won't know that unless we, we, we try it. And um, so I, I for one, support, uh, obviously, as a mover, a, a beach grooming trial, and I hope I can garner some support around the table for that this evening. And the pu pi piping plovers, uh, as you know, M&R, uh, when, when piping plovers show up in May and there's a nesting period through to roughly middle of June, we really, uh, there's, there's no opportunity to do beach maintenance. I understand that. It's, it's a federal statute. Uh, we have to protect an endangered bird, and so I do, I do understand that part. But I think that it's important that we sit down with Minister of Natural Resources face-to-face -face and, and, uh, and talk about what we can and cannot do and what are the periods of time. We have some information, but I think it's good that, uh, a good thing to have the Beaches Association involved and other community reps, uh, from staff, council, to talk to M&R face-to-face -face and come up with some uh, kind of arrangement how things should be, must be, how they are handled uh, with piping plovers upon their arrival and what we can do leading up to the uh, nesting period, during nesting period, and after the nesting period. I, I, I just think that's not clear enough. So anyway, that's my motion, and I uh, appreciate Council Minaj seconding the motion this evening, and um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, if we if we move forward with the motion and support it, does it imply that um, we would then receive um, an indication back via a staff report or some other mechanism as to the potential um, financial side of this? Um, I, it's, it sounds like a great idea, but it's just almost every single council meeting we seem to be over budget on pretty much every tender and spending money. So I'm just cognizant of the fact that we should, you know, keep in mind, because um, the, the machine, as you said, $200 an hour um, for the operator or, or the equipment rental. And I, will, we, will we get back something that suggests um, a trial would, would cost us $10,000, $15,000? Because I think um, it's a good idea to try something, but again, you know, in the absence of any indication of cost, we... we we seem to be spending a lot of money that we haven't budgeted for. So is, is that sort of implied in all of this, if we agree to it? Well, I read the motion. I guess you can imply whatever you want, and it really I think I would, uh, and, and I guess I would speak to it. I would certainly th hope that we could perhaps before we do that, staff would come back with an idea about what costs and how it would work and, and that type of thing, because I think, in fairness to everybody, we should know how much it's going to cost. I think uh, Councillor Minaj, and then we'll go right down. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I chuckle because I feel like this first world problem is, uh, is, is definitely one that um, has tested my patience, and, and uh, I, would, I would really like to, to get moving on these, these items. This trial is long overdue. This is a small step in a, in a bigger picture that might even include fencing off the plover area ahead of time and inviting our guests to be there because the the only ones that survived in the last few years on this part of the shoreline were the very ones that were born and bred in in Port Elgin on the main beach so this to me we we need to keep talking we need to to keep uh, all of these partners involved but we need some action items and, and I'm really thinking that collectively the community has essentially had its head in the sand for a long time on this. And, and it's time to move, move along, move ahead. And uh, I would like to see us clearly uh, get this practice. If it, if it works well, let's get it in the budget. Let's, let's not have this discussion about how our beaches look and whether or not we're going to protect piping plovers, of course we are. And I think we should go out of our way to do it. So I'm going to be fully supportive of this, and I hope this is the uh, stepping board for more. And let's get her done and stop messing around. Thank you. Councillor Grace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question is um, really involving um, order. 
of I, I support the the um, the idea definitely, but um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember something about if if we uh, take action that endangers the piping plover that goes against the Ministry of Natural Resources, the fine is a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Is could I get clarification on that? Uh, I think they're up to ha I think it's up to half a million actually in in, in certain cases. So they're very substantial. So uh, I, I don't. I, mean, I guess. Um, don't take I'm, that number, but they are very substantial. Right, and so um, I'm assuming that. Before moving forward on in, on anything, we would be getting some kind of a clarification from the MNR that yes, we can do this. Here's what, where we can do it. Is that correct? Yeah. If if I may, we we negotiate and speak with MNR annually in the springtime. Um, if we groom too early, we can certainly be in violation with the Endangered Species Act, and uh, therefore we don't make any movement beaches until we have that communication with them annually. Councillor Dave Matt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I've heard it two times said tonight, once with David Smelt and, and once by Mike Myatt, that they want to use the same machine that we currently use on the Southampton Beach. So we already own one of these machines. We lease it. Okay, so we have one in our possession. We... we Answer that. Yeah, Southampton uses it. We lease it in Southampton. It's a completely different grade of sand in Southampton than what we experience on the Port Algamain beach and further south. I understand that. That's a so maybe for beach. clarity, who do we lease it from? And it's it's not in our possession. They no, they bring it here. Yeah, Public Works brings it here, and I'm sorry, I don't know the name of the company we okay. lease it from. So no, we don't have it in our possession. So they, they come correct. periodically and grade the beach, or yeah. uh, grade the beach twice, yeah. twice a year. Okay, and and did not uh, the Beach Association say they were going to purchase this device if it was found to be adequate? I didn't hear, I didn't hear that in his deputation tonight, and I've heard it as a rumor, but that's strictly just as a to tell you know, yeah, yeah I've, I've heard, heard that. I've heard it say. said more than twice, so have you? Okay, yeah. Okay. I think we've had lots of this. Go ahead. Make a general comment. Support the resolution or the motion. I just wanted to make a general comment about the 2016 beach maintenance plan. I think it. I think it is good and has worked well. And I think that uh, um, what it does is identify these areas, uh, all the areas across the beach, and, and and what we make it clear to the public what we're going to do in each of those places, what the municipality will do to maintain the beach in each of those specific areas. Uh, along our waterfront, I think that is has worked well, and I think uh, you know. So I support this beach groomer trial. I've supported it for some time, and I keep it. I think the key thing for us to to do once we've done the trial and we've assessed its efficacy is to make sure that it comes back to this council and that we amend that beach maintenance plan if it's warranted to do so to change the maintenance that we're doing. So that. So let's not, um, well, the point I'm trying to make is let's not do anything ad hoc in addition or to what, we're, what, we've, what we've said what we're going to do uh, in that beach maintenance plan. Let's try this out. Let's see how it works. Let's see if it gets the results we want. Uh, if it does and we want to employ it on the south end of Port Elgin or on the main beach in Port Elgin or anywhere else where it isn't currently in the beach, beach maintenance plan, let's add it to the beach maintenance plan and let's be clear with the public on an ongoing basis about what we're doing. Um, and I, because I, I think that really gives our staff uh, a tool they need to, to say to the public when they're asking them questions about what they're doing, you know, here's what, here's what we're supposed to be doing. Here's what council has said, has told us that we should be doing on these public beaches. And, and, and then when it's, when it, somebody comes up and says, well, I'd like it to be done differently, then they can come to council come here rather than going to our staff on the beach or anybody else, frankly, come to this council and say, no, I think that you should be doing it this way and we can discuss it and we can change the plan. But let's keep that pattern up and with whatever we do and let's be clear with the public when they do this test that uh, it's going to have to come back to this table and we're going to have to make that choice. Thank you, Mr. I, Mayor. Councillor Madison. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, too, will be supporting this motion. I have a question for Jane. Um, the machine that we currently lease for the Southampton Beach, is that the same machine that Mr. Schmelt showed us that lifts and removes the invasive grasses? From my understanding, it's a similar machine. I can't make comment if it's exactly the same or not. Because that is one of the most contentious is issues that is heard around uh, both municipalities, Southampton, Saugeen Shores, Port Elgin, Saugeen Township, is the amount of grass that's on the beach that limits the amount of sand that people can sit on, which is a more, I think it's a bigger problem than whether it's a splash pad or volleyball. People are very upset with the amount of grass that they that is on the beaches. So it's something I think our waterfront master plan or waterfront plan itself will have to be looking at very shortly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any further comments? I, I, I support the motion too, and I think it's you know I think it's a great step going forward. I I do agree with Diane. I think we need to have some idea. Is this going to be fifty thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars or two thousand dollars? I think that's important, and uh, I, perhaps it would be nice if we could come back with a with a number before we go ahead and do it because it's money that we did not budget again. So, if that's all that is. Any further questions? All in favor? Opposed, if any, that's carried. So the next item on our agenda is bylaws, and it's a bylaw to authorize the acquisition of land, part one, plan 3R9816 from Mystic Cove Developments. And it's been moved by Deputy Mayor Charbonneau, seconded by Councillor Madison, the bylaw 84-2016 being a bylaw to authorize the acquisition of land is hereby read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed and sealed this 11th day of July. July 2016. Questions or comments? All in favor? Opposed, if any, that's carried. And the next uh, is a close to public session, and it's been moved by Councillor Madison and seconded by Councillor Mike Myatt. The council move into a close to public session in accordance with bylaw 63 2015, section 382B regarding personal matters about an identifiable individual, more particularly regarding the recruitment of a chief administrative officer and a personnel matter. All in favor? That's carried. We'll be in the we will re be, be reconvening here in open session after, that, after the closed session. We're going to start here. Uh, it's been moved by Councillor Huber and seconded by Councillor Minaj that the, the council will rise from the closed to public session and resume the regular council meeting. All in favor? It's been moved by Vice, uh, Deputy Mayor Charbonneau, seconded by Vice Deputy Mayor Huber, that bylaw 85-2016, being a bylaw to appoint a Chief Administrative Officer of the Corporation of the Town of Saugeen Shores and to define, the, to define the general duties, roles, and responsibilities of the CAO is hereby read a first, second, and third time and finally passed and sealed this 11th day of July 2016. Any discussion? All in favor? That's carried. I have a press release, and I'm going to read it for everyone, and if anybody wants copies of it, I think we can probably get you copies. But the Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores is pleased to announce that Mr. David Smith has been hired as the town's new chief administrative officer. Mr. Smith, who is no relative of mine, <laughs> <coughs> that I know, I do have a nephew of David, will replace current CAO Larry Allison, who announced his intention to retire from the municipality earlier this year after a lengthy career in local government, and I know it's over 30 years. Mr. Smith comes to Saugeen Shores with over 30 years of diverse public service background in the broader GTA, where he held positions with the City of Mississauga, within the Recreation and Parks and Library Division, the City of Waterloo's Community, Culture, Recreation Services Department, culminating in his appointment to the Town of Halton Hills, where he served as the Chief Administrative Officer. David has a degree from the University of Toronto, supplemented by numerous municipal-related courses and other programs. In accepting the position, Mr. Smith indicated that Saugeen Shores has an excellent reputation as both a place to live and a place to work. I am delighted to be joining the town of, as the CAO and appreciate the opportunity extended to me by Mayor Smith and his council colleagues. Mayor Smith stated that David impressed our recruitment committee and council with his communication collaboration skills and attributes we look forward to his contributions to our very active and engaged community mr smith will be commence his duties in Saugeen shores on august the 8th and looks forward to relocating excuse me relocating to the municipality in the coming year or so 
And if you need, I think we can probably give you copies of that if you want before we leave. It's been moved by Councillor Grace, seconded by Councillor Dave Mayette, the bylaw 86 2016, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores, is hereby read a first, second, and third time and finally passed and sealed this 11th day of July 2016. All in favour? It's carried. And it's been moved by Councillor Myatt and seconded by Councillor Grace that this regular council meeting of July 11, 2016, hereby adjourn at 10.17 p.m.